We met Amber for the first time at the Tides Tavern, out on the deck on a beautiful day. I've said before, which sounds a little cheesy, but she's just as a sparkly person. And she just was so, she was just so lovely to talk to. And we chatted and while well, she was serving us and just was really lovely. And so that's when I sent the message to Casey saying that I thought Amber was gonna be Tyler's future wife. I have been searching all of my days. And you gotta understand that the tides is just this most amazing place. And so I'm sitting on the deck and here comes Amber. And like Lynn said, I mean, she's got a radiance about her, like instantly. I said to her, I understand you're my son's future wife. And then they asked me, are you single? They kind of laughed and said, well, we think that you're gonna marry our son. And I, my first thought was like, who are these people? What's wrong with this guy that they need his parents out here? <laughs> you know, like, so I was just kind of like, oh, right. Are you doing this? <laughs> and most women, I think, would kind of go, whoa. I kind of jabbed Lynn was sure. horrified. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yay. Uh, but Amber was totally cool and she just started engaging us and so we bantered back and forth. Uh, my, fa my favorite question is she said, well, is my future husband good looking? And I pointed at Lynn and I pointed at me and I said, well, yeah. <laughs> I just had this feeling that if Tyler had been there, he would have thought, oh my gosh, this is, she is wonderful. And he wasn't there, so we had to step in. Gotta go back, start over. Tyler was actually a very easy little boy and very cheerful, and he, he was just a happy little kid. He was like, he's like a guy's guy with the exception of he, he really likes like boy band music. I was a little thrown off by it at first, especially when he took me to his room to show off his posters. <laughs> Not sports posters, he had a poster of Hanson in his, in his room at the fraternity house. As a little kid, Amber always ran around with no clothes on, and we always had to be putting her back in our clothes. She still does that today, I think. <laughs> Mom, get in there and wear her eyes. She's such a pistol. She's always been a pistol. I remember when she was in like the fifth grade at Gig Harbor, it's this little tiny sleepy, used to be a fishing town. Walmart was going to come in and Amber was horrified. So she carried a petition around and she got her friends to carry petitions around. And they didn't build a Walmart in Gig Harbor. And so she learned early on the power of being a powerful woman. For you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. Now I see clearly it's you I'm looking for. All of my days. I was doing good. It says the first man a little girl falls in love with is her dad. Thank you for standing by me today and always. Love, Joe. We hung out with her twice more. Once she was our server, but then another time she got off work around 7.30 or 8 o'clock and hung with us till like 9.30. We had beers together and we just talked and I mean she was, by this time I felt like, you know, well Lynn would say to me, Tyler doesn't marry her. We're getting rid of Tyler and we're taking Amber. I said, that's ridiculous, I'm not doing it, um, but I think I said something like, why is she working at the Tides right now? And he said, well, she's just waitressing right now because she just moved back from Maui. And that's what made me think, well, that's pretty cool. I got an email and it was from him and um, he pretty much was saying, oh, so I understand you're my future wife and all this stuff. And it was so weird, and I was, but it was like one of those things where there was something about it that just felt really right. After three months, maybe, um, we said, okay, let's, we should meet. So I was coming to New York for a wedding. We kind of like connected and I saw him and we hugged and it, for some reason it just felt so like natural and it was 
meant to be like it was the most right thing in the world. Yeah, it was it changed my life. Well if I spell it out, if I get it out, will you hear me when I tell you about what I have to say before it gets too late? It's not easy as I said it'd be, but there's something right about you and me. Something right about you and me. Every time she talked about him, she just lit up and she was just so happy and she was always smiling and it was like she had, every time she got an email, all she would do was laugh. But I think that's just the craziest and coolest love story that I've ever heard. So I think that you'll definitely go on John Anderson for that one. Um, but I'm so glad that you both took the leap of faith with, with each other and decided to meet in New York and, and here we are. Oh, I had butterflies in my stomach for both of them. I and mean, then they came to Richmond where we live. So I said, so Tyler, what's the deal? I mean, how did New York go? What's going on? And he just looked at me with his Tyler look and he said, Dad, I don't mess this up. I'm going to marry this Someone once said, there are realists and there are dreamers in this world. You think the dreamers would find the dreamers and the realists would find the realists. But more often than not, the opposite is true. When you hear, but you see, you the dreamers need the realists to keep them from soaring too when close to the sun. You just don't see. And the realists, well, when you're thinking without the dreamers, they might never get off the ground. Thank you, love, for always being my realist, when while also supporting my dreams no matter how crazy they may be. I promise to help you love life, to encourage, celebrate, and support the big and the small. To weather the storms that will inevitably face us. As we all know, that even after the darkest nights, the sun will always rise. I want to travel the world with you and watch a million sunsets by your side. I will do my best to be an amazing mom to our kids and will always show them how much I love their dad. Although you might be our realist, I promise to always give you wings and encourage you to fly. All you want to do is fall asleep. In my honor and privilege to pronounce you to be husband and wife. I can your vows in your marriage with a kiss. Think of me. When you're driving down an empty hall. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor and a privilege to introduce Mr. and Mrs. Tyler and Amber Mickelson. What do you see in such a thing of beauty? Do you think of me? Think of me. I will find you out. Today, Amber and Tyler, there's so much love that I see in the two of you. I can't wait for you to start your married lives together as husband and wife. We both share a zest for life, for travel, friends. Just look at how many people we have here how many people were on your wedding party. Um, I think that says a lot about who you are as people. And I, I can't forget one really important detail that I think kind of binds them together and really was the reason that I was like, oh, these people are never going anywhere. They're gonna be just married forever. <laughs> their love for their blankets. So we don't know, they both love their blankies. Um, they go everywhere, so I made sure I'll be sure to give them back to you. Maybe you guys can share tonight. I didn't get Tyler's. So the first thing that Tyler taught me is that whenever you give a speech at your best friend's wedding, you're supposed to wear their uh, baseball jersey when they were growing up. Another valuable lesson 
from Tyler is to appreciate the finer things in life. For example, here are a few requests he emailed my wife Kate and I regarding an upcoming stay at our apartment in New York. Hey Kate and Seth, looking forward to seeing you soon. Just want to lay out a few minor requests if that's okay. A. Linens. Only one word really matters when it comes to linens, and that word is Egyptian. <laughs> I personally don't like to require a specific thread count, but let's just say I won't enter the room if it's below 300. <laughs> Number two, fan. I have told you in the past, but just in case you felt I was kidding around, in quotes, or something, I must have a fan on at all times to sleep, and it must be a circulating fan. If it doesn't circulate, it can get cold, and I like to sleep with the perfect temperature throughout the night. This brings me to my next point blankets. If it's not soft, just throw it away. Or use it in your room. <laughs> Tyler went through a phase where he was really ER. And he would even say so. And so he kind of had a dark look at the world and I, I don't know where that came from. I didn't really look at life as promising as I do now. And I was kind of out of control. I didn't like my job. I didn't want to have a job. I didn't have any real motivation for a long time. But literally from the very first time we saw Amber and Tyler together, it was like we saw this transformation in our son. I feel sorry for her most of the time. Uh, she, uh, she's definitely a challenge, but uh, he's steady. I think he's very supportive. He, yes, I think he compliments her well, very well. He's the most genuine person I've ever met in my life. He's so honest about who he is and he's so deeply cares about his friends and family and like puts them above anybody else. That Amber has been so awesome for him because she really has given him a much more positive outlook in life and I think that that has, is something that was always there but that it's sort of returned. I just think she is such a wonderful product of both the mother and the father. I just couldn't ask for people that could give Amber the courage, the passion, the intellect, the creativity. I mean, she's just a remarkable, remarkable person. And I think anyone in her life that she chooses to love is just the luckiest person. Come to realize that you aren't truly a man until you care about someone more than yourself. Amber, you are so thoughtful, caring, intentional, and warm. I don't know how I got so lucky to have you love me. Since meeting you, I've become a better partner, a better friend, a better son, a better provider, and a genuinely better person. You've made me the man I am today, and I vow to spend the rest of our lives making sure that I'm the man you need me to be. I promise to take care of you, to support you in anything you choose to do, to listen, to share my feelings, to do your laundry, to make you laugh, to be a good father, to protect you, to carve out time for us no matter how busy life gets, and to give you a hug every day that we are together until the day that I die. I'm in.